Hi guys! So welcome or welcome back to my channel. I know this is different from what I usually post. And by the way, my friend made these cute dress-in accessories. And so if you guys are interested, I linked her shop down below. I'm dividing this video into five parts. First is basic info or accessories I use for my laptop. My most used apps, how I customize the inside and outside of my laptop. How I organize my digital files and lastly, some Google Chrome extensions I use for the past few weeks. Also, disclaimer, I'm not forcing anyone to have this kind of setup. I'm simply sharing my own setup. Not everyone has the privilege or access to these kinds of things. I found two youth-led initiatives slash NGOs that particularly cater to students that don't have access to these kinds of resources especially with the transition to online school want to check them out i link them down below in the description box and if you guys want to donate so yeah without further ado let's go to the video So I have the 2017 MacBook Pro 13 inches and it's only 128GB sadly and I got it 10% off when I bought it in my university. Both kinds of laptops do its job, I just prefer the functionality and design of Apple and it was really easy to adjust to the Mac OS after being Windows all my life. My clear case is from Shopee and good thing I have it because I dropped it once on the road and it prevented my laptop from getting even more damaged. And it's also nice because I have an adhesive laptop stand that I could just stick to it instead of the actual laptop so that it doesn't get damaged. Honestly, one of my best purchases because it makes my laptop eye level so it prevents me from having neck strains and my palm or hand also rests comfortably on my laptop as I type. I bought it instead of a fan because I don't have enough USB ports on my laptop but the stand I bought still helps the air circulate so it doesn't overheat. Since I only have one working USB port, I bought two kinds of USB hubs. I suggest you guys invest in a good quality one because the first one I bought with a lot of ports can't really handle a lot of big power consuming devices like my external hard drive or drawing tablet. It's too weak so I bought another more expensive one that can handle my hard drive or tablet and charger at the same time. Lastly, I DIY'd my camera cover. Usually, I just use washi tape. It does its job. I just remove it and put it back in if I need to use the camera. Better safe than sorry against weirdo hackers on the internet. Am I right? Washi tape does its job but I also recently bought an actual protector and I just got it today. So here's a new footage of me inserting it and it's from Shopee. I linked it down below. I also have a keyboard protector and it has saved my life because my keyboard is literally dying. I can feel the keys getting lifted off whenever I type but this prevents it from doing that. But yeah, I broke mine because I type too fast and too hard. <laughs> so this is also a reason why I invested in a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse from Logitech for both my iPad and laptop as well. They can switch smoothly between the devices in just one click and the mouse wasn't really necessary. I still bought it so that I don't have to switch back and forth from the keyboard to my laptop trackpad. First things first, I installed this famous but basic but also super cute clock screensaver. Most people already have this but yeah, I linked the site down below for both Mac and Windows if you guys want to get it. So now let's talk about my most used apps, mainly the ones in the dock right here. I like to keep this part simple and small so that it's not distracting and you can also adjust the size with the line between the trash icon. But you can also further customize this in the system preferences. So the first app here is Google Calendar which I really prefer over Apple Calendar. Sadly, there's no desktop app for this but a cool thing I recently discovered is that we can add website shortcuts to our laptop as if they're an actual app you downloaded so i linked a tutorial down below i also tweaked the settings a bit for my own preferences i turned on the reduce the brightness of past events so that i know what's done and my eyes can focus on the present and future deadlines i also turned on desktop notifications so that i never forget and speaking of notifications through the settings of each type of calendar you can actually customize when and how you're notified for both all day and time specific events I also have three kinds of calendars, school, job, slash YouTube, and life. You don't have to do this, I only do it because I signed up to be a part of so many things and my life has become hectic. So yeah, all the stuff are pretty explanatory. 
I won't really explain the notes app because it's super messy and random and it's more of a brain dump of stuff and ideas to be honest. But I still split it into 6 categories so that I feel more organized. Next are the 3 Adobe applications I use. I don't want to get sued, but I'm just saying you guys can download a torrent or cracked version somewhere there in the internet for free. But yeah, I'm still trying to learn After Effects, but I like to use Illustrator more often now than Photoshop, and it's mainly for vector art slash clean illustrations and Photoshop. It's more for my thumbnails, editing photos and texts, simple layouts, and digital painting. And then Final Cut Pro, this is where I edit my videos. As for stickies and Google Chrome, I'll talk more about this in the next few sections. And my Spotify, it's linked down below by the way. I have many types of playlists if you guys want to follow with different genres and moods that is based on how I'm currently feeling. I prefer the desktop version of the app because if you're nosy like me you can see what your friends are currently listening to and we can also customize the playlists just like the cover and descriptions and stuff like that next is the app called self-control i talked more in depth of this in my previous apps i use for college video but basically this stops you from going on certain websites if you guys want to focus on studying and cc cleaner i love this app so much it's free and really great if you have a lot of junk or files you don't know are actually taking up a lot of space in your laptop one time i used it before and i was able to let go of like 30 gigabytes and i was so happy because guys i'm struggling with 128 gigabytes as for Notion, there are a lot more YouTube channels that further explain and better explain this application than me so you guys can just check those out. But I have my template linked down below if you guys want to duplicate it and customize it to your own liking. And I'm also on the personal pro plan for free because I used my school emails. As of year ago, Notion is my best friend. I used this for three things. Personal lists, job stuff, and number three, tracking my online school modules. And lastly, Slack and Telegram. These messaging apps that I use for work purposes most of the time, like for my internship and volunteer work. Now let's talk about the apps I don't have on the dock. Here's just a complete list of it. I also removed some built-in applications just because I don't really use them often and take up a lot of space like Pages, Keynote, etc. And immediately delete an app if I don't use it. So some just other notable apps are Extractor, which extracts zip files, and Flux. Basically, this is like the night shift mode of Apple, but has a more wide range of settings based on your time, location, or color preferences. I think it helps reduce eye strain, especially if it's dark or nighttime. I also have Microsoft apps my university gives free access to us, but honestly, I never use them except when it's completely necessary because I prefer Google and they basically have all the counterparts for Microsoft and it's for free. I also use Preview which is a built-in app for MacBooks. I use them for viewing, highlighting, and editing PDFs or school readings. Adobe Acrobat is also similar to this and it's free but I mainly use this just for signing PDFs. I installed Proton VPN mainly because I wanted to use Netflix USA. It worked by the way and it's for free. I still don't use it that much but I still keep it here. And then lastly, VLC which is where I watch downloaded shows or videos and views which is where I download the torrents I get from the internet when I download movies or applications. So like I said earlier, I bought a clear case instead of a colored one so that I can customize it to my liking. And attached to my laptop, I have a bunch of stickers, washi tape, patches, and some memorabilia for a personal touch to it. And I also use washi tape to put them and stick them to the laptop so that it doesn't get damaged. And then I cover it safely with my case. I mostly get my washi tape and stickers either from AKC, Shopee, Common Room PH, Trinoma department store, or just some random mall stall. I'd also add some cute Gudetama stickers all over my laptop, and I don't think it really damaged it. I just clean it with tissue and alcohol every time it gets scratched already, and it's good as new. And the Gudetama stickers are from Shopee, and I linked it down below. For the sticky notes, this is actually a built-in app already for MacBooks and it's fun because you can customize its font, size, and colors through the settings on the upper left corner. The font I used for these are Arial Black, Courier New, and Savate. 
Honestly, what I put here changes from time to time, but mostly I put important reminders for school or personal life or the content details I need for the pub mats I have to make for my volunteer slash work since I'm on the creatives team for all of them. So now for my folders, I got the icons from erasutia.com. I linked it down below. And I also linked the site down below on how to change the icon folders because I don't know if I can explain it right here. I also tweaked the view options because I don't really like big folder icons on my laptop as you can see how small my dock is as well. I made the grid and icon size really small and also a really small font size. You can also reposition the labels, so I prefer them on the right instead of the bottom. So yeah, you guys can guess the vibe I'm trying to achieve here, a Japanese animation, Studio Ghibli aesthetic. As you can see, I have three desktops with three different Studio Ghibli wallpapers just in case I have a lot of different types of applications open. For example, like desktop one could be for school, number two for leisure, or number three with Photoshop or Illustrator open. I could easily switch with a forehand and upward or sliding gesture, by the way. Since I only have 128GB in my laptop, I try to keep my stuff in it as little as possible and put most of them in the cloud, aka Google Drive or my hard drive. So I categorize my files into 7 types or 7 categories. First is art. Most of my art is in Google Drive because they take way too much space and the ones here are usually unfinished works or recently finished works and some art tips I find online and recently downloaded tools, presets, and textures. Next is school. It's pretty self-explanatory. Every time a semester ends, I compile all my school year folders into one and then transfer it into Google Drive. Usually, I have three types of folders here, class folders that contain readings, powerpoints, etc, syllabus folder, and useful folder. The last one is basically important info that I like to keep throughout the school year or throughout my college life, like school calendar, enlistment process, cost of printing in campus, one by one photos, tuition receipts, and etc. Third one is screenshots folder. I try to fix it every two to three weeks because it really gets messy and then reorganize them into different folders if they're still useful but I usually just delete the ones I don't think I'll come back to and I customize it so that my screenshots are saved to this folder then directly to the desktop and I link the tutorial below if you guys still don't know how. Next is my work folder and this basically contains the student org and the internship I'm currently working on. I also placed my portfolio here so here's a preview of it. I'm really proud of how I made it. Also, follow my art account. My fifth folder is watch. Basically, I usually keep it empty because I only have 128 gigabytes, but I mostly just stream on anime sites, view for K-dramas, or Netflix. But yeah, if I download, I usually just delete it immediately after watching or transfer it to my hard drive. Next is YouTube. Honestly, I barely have files here except for thumbnails, sponsored documents, and recently downloaded sound effects. Since most of my YouTube stuff are in my hard drive, the seventh folder is mess. Basically, a dump. <laughs> I mostly put photos here or random stuff that don't really fit in my other folders. And my favorite folders here are my corn things folder and ebooks folder, my treasured babies. I also have a to fix folder and I just dump whatever here honestly that I need to categorize in the future because I'm lazy at the moment. First things first, Momentum. This is an iconic tab screensaver. It has a time, a beautiful changing scenery wallpaper, and also a to-do list slash focus of the day type of thing. But honestly, I just use this for aesthetic purposes, not really for the task list because I have my own planner and sticky notes. Next is Weba Highlighter. As said on the name, it allows you to highlight any website. It's so useful, especially when looking for sources for my school papers or just reading the class modules on Canvas. It makes things easier to read and digest. It also saves your past highlights, so if ever you lost the website, you can just go to your highlight history. 
Next is Google Docs Offline. This is such a lifesaver, especially when Wi-Fi at school or at home would randomly stop. I can still edit and access my files. It will sync in the cloud once I do have Wi-Fi, so that's great. You don't lose anything. Lastly, for the school category is tab groups. I recently discovered this through a friend. It's amazing, guys. You can get this by going to Chrome um, flags and then just search and enable tab group. So yeah, it lets you group your tabs, color coordinate, and name the group. I think it's most useful when you're doing a long research paper that needs different topics to look for at the same time. So for my non-school related extensions, first is of course Netflix Party. We all know this, it's really game and life changing. Simply just click the extension once choosing what to watch and send the URL to your friends. I also recently discovered Scener and it basically does what Netflix Watch Party does but allows you to video and audio call with your friends while watching. But sadly, both parties need Netflix accounts, so that's the problem. But we have MetaStream right here, guys. It's great for watch parties. If not all of you have Netflix or the show you want to watch together is not on Netflix. Just log in, add the link to the video, and send the URL to your friends and you're good to go! I also have dark mode but I don't use it often to be honest since most sites already have dark modes. But it's still great to have just in case. And picture in picture extension by Google. You can watch videos while scrolling in a different site or some other application on your laptop. So, yeah, yay, fun. You can check the description box for the important links I said earlier and also the two youth led organizations I've tackled in the introduction that cater to students having a hard time adjusting to online classes. So, I do hope you guys could check them out or support them or donate to them, whatever you can. But yeah, bye!